Hello and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about Schedule Cron Jobs in ASP.NET Core. So let's jump right in. Make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project. Do you want to earn $100,000 a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just 3 months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are a startup hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. So in this project, we will be using this package, Kronos, and also Microsoft.Extensions.Hosting. Alright, let's start by creating ASP.NET Core Web API project. Click on Next, Next, and Create. So once the project is created, I'm going to install the package. So after installing the package, we have to create a new class called cron job service, which is the abstract class. The cron job service is an implementation of the I hosted service interface. Thus, cron job service is a hosted service that is activated once at app startup and is gratefully shut down at app shutdown. If an error is thrown during background task execution, then the dispose method will be called to clean up resources if planned. If only have one job to run, then we can hard code a cron job service with a specific schedule easily. However, we usually need to schedule several background service jobs in an application. In this scenario, we can create a base cron job service class, then all cron jobs inherit the abstract cron jobs class so that the, they can be configured and registered in a systematic way. So an example of current cron job service here. So in this cron job service, we use a timer to track the time and trigger the background task. When the time hits the schedule, note line 3 specifies that the type of the timer is system.timers.timer, which is different from the system.threading.timer. You can read, so I believe both of them can achieve the same result in this scheduling scenario. I pick system.timers to timer simply because of my familiarity with it. So the cron job service inherits two interfaces, I hosted service and I disposable, which required the implementation of start async, stop async, and dispose methods. The start async method begins the schedule job method. The stop async method stops the timer and the dispose method is the releases the timer so that it is eligible for garbage collection the actual background task is implemented in the do work method in line 44 and 45 so so 48 so do work method is a virtual method in the abstract class so that the drive classes can override the do work method with their real job definitions in order to trigger the background task do work on schedule we need a scheduled method so which implement the straightforward briefly this method continuously computes the next occurrence based on the current expression then it, it starts a timer with a certain delay when the time is due the timer will raise an elapsed event which stops the timer executes the background task do work and schedule the top job recursively so the constructor of cron job service class take two parameters cron expression and time zone info which determines the occurrence of the scheduled job with these two parameters we can easily configure different schedule for our background task all right we will create a new class called my cron job 3 in my cron job 3 class the method start async and stop async are written for demo purposes and they can be ignored in the drive class the start async and stop async method will be called when the application starts and stops these two methods need to be overridden only when you only need to special logic in a real application with the base cron job service what we really need is implementation of do work method very cool isn't it so the next step is schedule multiple cron jobs using generics you might have noticed that the constructor of my cron job 3 class takes two parameters i schedule config my cron job 
3 config and i logger micron job 3 logger the parameter logger is easy to understand which is an instance of i logger from the dependency injection container then what is the i schedule config t config remember the two parameters the constructor of the cron job service class the i schedule config is an interface holding these two properties the i schedule config T can be registered as a singleton in the DI container. So here's the code. So this code defines type schedule config and I schedule config T. Let me explain why we need generics. Since schedule configuration will be the same for all cron jobs, we don't want to define a separate class for the schedule configuration in each micron job class. However, if we use only one I schedule config type, then it won't be able to work well with the DI system because the DI container only instantiates one instance of the I schedule config type. In other words, the last register schedule config instance will be passed to all background jobs thus the background jobs are not able to have different schedules which is not what we want to solve the problem we need to use generic type so which allows the di system to discriminate multiple schedule config instances in other words the i schedule config micron job 1 and i schedule config micron job 2 will have different guids in the di system we need to register i schedule config t and micron job 1, 2, 3 and so on. Can we make dependency registration more efficient and elegant? Yes. But in this code here, so three cron jobs are registered in the DI container in a systematic way to, that allows schedule to be customized using a method. So do you like this method? Let me show you some more tricks. So we name the extension method as add cron job t. The generic type t represents a type which inherits the cron job service base class. The extension method configures the schedule config t, register the con schedule config as a singleton, and add the t drive class from the cron job service as a host service. Therefore, we can register all cron jobs which inherit the cron job service in the DI container using the extension method services.addcronjob my job. Note that the hosted service is a singleton, so all cron jobs are singleton. If we want to inject a scope service to a cron job, then we need to inject i service provider and create a scope to resolve the scope service. So here's example. So when I run this application, as you can see, the cron job started. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learn how you can schedule cron jobs in ASP.NET Core. So don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. To joining our course, you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com. Thank you.